The First Million Words, Episode 21, Genre Schmanra, with Dan Wells. It's like, wasn't this guy just writing about monsters? And you actually also have a, uh, like, kind of an epic fantasy route. Like that, yeah, the... that's where I started, actually, mm-hmm. was writing epic fantasy, because that's what I read as a kid and as a teenager. And wrote, you know, I think it was four epic fantasy books with some weird little horror things mixed in here and there. Nice. And then it was finally my sixth book was I'm Not a Serial Killer, which was completely different, and that's the one that sold. So just trying new things worked, and I guess maybe I'm sticking with that concept of writing something new every time now because that's what got me published. Yeah, yeah, yeah it seemed to do pretty well, yeah. <laughs> Um, and that, uh, so, so when you were writing the epic fantasy, you, you said there was a little bit of horror in there. Is that why you went, you, you think, with kind of a horror route? Yeah, I can definitely look back at the books that I've written and kind of trace the progress of, you know, straight epic fantasy to slightly dark fantasy to dark historical fiction to dark modern fiction, you know, over the mm-hmm. course of those books. And all of a sudden I'm writing horror by accident, <laughs> um, just by embracing what worked and and moving on to a new thing so oh great great and then and then now with um uh with partials that's more or less well i mean i only assume because i read the first you know chapter that it's kind of a Mm -hmm. you know dystopian future yeah yeah and there's you know one chapter in it that i think uh you could consider horror or horrific oh and the rest of it's all very you know, just post-apocalyptic science fiction. So, okay, and and is that uh, uh, do, you know, because I know with the John Cleaver series when it first was published, it was kind of marketed as YA, but then but then it kind of wasn't. Well, see, and that's the thing, and uh, we 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 have touched very very lightly on five or six really weird topics here in the last couple of minutes, <laughs> and so let's talk about genre labeling. As our first one, okay. um, uh, the serial killer series. The first thing you need to know is that I don't really write for an audience. Mm-hmm. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, audience. <laughs> I write for myself, and uh, I wrote this serial killer series not because I thought that adults would like it or kids or whoever, but just because I was really interested in it. And then sent it to a publisher, and they said, "Oh, this is great. We can publish this as an adult thriller." And that was that was Tor Books in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And then it got sent to the UK, and the UK publisher that picked it up was a YA publisher. It was Headline. Hmm. And so because the UK one came out first, um, Uh. I was kind of pushing it as a YA. Mm -hmm. And it does have a teen protagonist in it, so a lot of people assumed it was YA. Um, But then it was actually published as adult fiction. You know, it's in the adult section of the bookstore. Um, and now that Partials is out, which is very explicitly YA, Mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, it's been picked up by an entirely different audience. You know, the, the, the YA book bloggers and so on have embraced it in a way that they never did the serial killer books because it just wasn't on their radar because of the Mm -hmm. way it was marketed. And I don't see a huge difference in content or age level between the books. I mean, the stories and the genres obviously different, but. Again, they're both just written for me. It just varies on which audience decides to pick it up first. Nice. So that's, well, that's well, that's the, yeah. It's kind of what I'm what what I'm kind of going through. I'm like, I, I think this uh, like what I write is just for an audience of two, which is just Ben and I. <laughs> I'm like, no one else is going to understand or like a story where, you know, you know that has all these sorts of jokes in it. Yeah. Yeah. B- background on us. Yeah. Uh, I am married to Guillermo's sister. Okay. And we've known each other like 10 years, and we're basically like the same person. 
uh, we we laugh at the same like fart jokes over and over again. So I, I get his cool. you know sense of humor in his uh, <laughs> his writing. So go, go on now, Guillermo. Oh oh no, I just uh, because yeah, it's hard to even what I'm writing now. I'm like it's just something I really haven't read before, so I'm not sure if there's even you know a market for it if you can even call it that, but. Yeah, is it, I mean, you haven't, you obviously haven't found a problem, you know, sort of crossing genres and, you know, defying those labels. Uh, well, I haven't found a major problem yet, but there have been weird little obstacles that I hadn't expected. So, for example, with the serial killer books, um, nobody knows where to find them in a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> because you go in and you, you, you know, you go into Barnes & Noble and ask, where's your horror novels? And it's not there because they don't really have a horror section. And then you say, well, okay, where's your YA? And it's not there. And it's not in science fiction. It's, it's actually shelved over in general fiction. Ooh. Um, which is, you know, seems weird, but that's also where Stephen King is shelved and, uh, people like that. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. But at the same time, unless you know how Barnes and Noble shelves stuff, you're not going to be able to find it. And because it's, kind of on the border of three or four different genres, almost every indie bookseller will shelve it differently. Yeah. It'll be in horror or it'll be in thriller or mystery or fantasy or however they choose to define their their lines. It will cross from one genre to another very easily because of how borderline it is. Hmm. Do, do you find that to be uh, like a problem? Um, you know, if people can't find your book right or, or anything or not having... You know, a hard label on yourself as a type of author, is that something that you see as like a difficulty? Well, it uh, it used to bother me mm -hmm. back when the book first came out and I would get reports from people saying, what, I, I thought your book was out, I can't find it. And I'd freak out and think, you know, my career is going to die because no one can find my book. Um, <laughs> but really, it's it's only the the people who refuse to talk to booksellers who can't find it. Because as soon as you go and say, hey, I'm looking for this book, then they look it up on their computer and you find it. So... That hasn't been as big of an obstacle as I thought it would be. And on the other hand, the fact that the book is so strange and kind of exists in this border territory, I think that has helped in some ways as I publish new things. Uh, when my ebook came out last summer and it was this uh, ridiculous horror comedy thing. Oh, that's the uh, A Night of Blacker Darkness? A Night of Blacker Darkness. Yeah. It's a uh, his historical horror comedy. <laughs> um, and I think people were ready to accept that from me, despite it being very different from the John Cleaver books, because they were already accustomed to my books being kind of gray area. Mm -hmm. And then Partials came out, which is completely different from both of them, and people are like, oh, okay, another Dan Wells book that's completely different from his others. <laughs> and so, if anything, that's the the label that I've ended up with, which is awesome, and I am very excited to have it, of the guy who keeps writing different things all the time. That's awesome. The, you know, that kind of uh, reminds me of Chuck Palahniuk. Oh, yeah. His yeah. books, every book he writes is different. Yeah, and it's basically, you know, you could call Fight Club science fiction you know because he's got this imaginary friend and and you know mm -hmm. so, some of his, his other books are you know horror like you know haunted you know stuff like that yeah and uh yeah i love that you can you know you can be you know genreless yeah well and that's it's hard to do um I think I was able to fall into it backwards, and, and part of the big reason that I've been able to make it work thus far is because I have two different publishers. Mm -hmm. um, the thrillers from Tor, and then the, the YA stuff from HarperCollins, or Balzer and Bray is the specific imprint. Mm -hmm. um, if I was still specifically with Tor, I think there would be slightly more pressure to maintain some kind of coherence in my my uh collection yeah yeah but uh, which is not to say anything bad about them because they're a great publisher and mm -hmm. i love them but that's how they think you know they they are forced by market pressure to kind of corral you into an audience that they can keep selling to book after book yeah it's like and, we, we publish fantasy books or science, yeah. fantasy and sci-fi books yeah mm -hmm. um and i do have another and and i've also if i can admit this i've, I've kind of been structuring from behind the scenes 
you know, which book can I put out next that will be different but still similar enough, you know, just close enough that I can put it out, but different enough that people will let me do something even more different next time. Ooh, and so the next book I have coming out from Tor it comes out in July. It's called The Hollow City, which is, it shares a lot of elements with the John Cleaver books. It's a psychological background, supernatural thriller, mm -hmm. but it's completely different and gets into some very science fictional territory by the end of it. And uh, I think that'll be another opportunity to push the envelope a bit in terms of which genre I'm in. Nice. Do, do you have uh, plans to go back to that epic fantasy thing? or? Uh... Yes, I do, actually. Nice. I would love to, and I have this great idea for it that, again, this is Dan Wells being weird and crossing <laughs> genres when he shouldn't be. Um, but uh, I, I want to do, and I'm just going to tell you the idea because I don't care. It's It's a great idea. <laughs> So there, there's this big gal galaxy. Okay, this is this starts off as like space opera, massive galactic civilization, all these different aliens, and then there's one planet in the galaxy where magic works, and mm -hmm. so that kind of they they what they did is they they made it a reserve. They said nobody's allowed to go there, but then they covered it with cameras and made it into the galaxy's most popular reality show. And so there's an epic fantasy going on inside of a space opera, and that's what I want to write. That's, but that'll be a few years before I can yeah, actually... Yeah, you would have to do a few extra degrees of the separation until you get there, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so you, you've you just created, like the, lit, like, the literary version of, like, the turducken, and it's amazing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> epic fantasy inside of a science fiction inside of... I don't know, Cthulhu miso, mythos. <laughs> no, all you have to do is deep fry it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Now, um, that, that, that sounds really interesting. That uh, I might have to steal that. No, Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it, it'll, I've, got, I've got books scheduled for me to write that'll take me at least two, if not three years to finish before I can do anything new. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Okay. We'll see, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, back uh, back on that topic of the you know labels and genre. Um, now, now you you said it was kind of a problem, at, or you thought of it as a problem at first. Um, do you think somebody coming right out and saying I am this type of author and that's all you're going to get from me? Do you think that's uh, you know worth anything? Like, is that a good thing? Do you think? I don't know. Um... And I'm, and my, my gut instinct is to say that, that, that there's no reason to limit yourself that way. Mm -hmm. Because when you say that, all your audience really hears, all your publisher really hears is inflexibility. And mm -hmm. so you look at somebody like Brandon Sanderson, who is an epic fantasy author, and that's what he's good at, and that's what he does, mm -hmm. and he's great at it. But even with that in mind, he still puts out these other little projects here and there. He has his little YA or middle grade comedy series. Mm -hmm. um, he's the Alloy of Law that came out last year was, you know, essentially a magic Western that was very short. I mean, yeah. it was not epic in any way. Yeah, that was fun. Um, and, and he uh, put out a little novella in connection with Infinity Blade, the video game. Oh, yeah, and yeah, so I saw that. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, and so he's willing to do all of these extra little projects here and there because, you know, that's that's what interests him and that's what people want to buy. And so I think the flexibility of saying, I will write whatever you want me to write <laughs> is very important in today's market. Mm -hmm. And I think it would also help if you, you know, had that, you know, passion already that you wanted to experiment, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, not everybody has that, I guess. Um, Kevin J. Anderson, if you ever hear him speak, he uses a metaphor of making popcorn. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you, you know, one way to make popcorn is, you know, to get out your oil and heat up your pan, make sure that it's, you have the perfect amount of oil and the perfect heat on the pan, and then you put one kernel of popcorn in it. 
and watch it very carefully and stir it around when necessary and, you know, very lovingly craft that until it pops. And then you set it aside and put the exact amount of salt on it. And then you start again with the next kernel of popcorn, which will produce excellent popcorn, but it'll take you a year to, you know, get a whole bucket of it. Yeah. Whereas if you just dump it all in the pan at once and wait to see what pops, uh, you'll end up with just as much popcorn, but it'll happen a lot quicker and you'll be able to enjoy it a little more. And I think that that uh, applies to writing very well, that mm-hmm. you need to have as many irons in the fire, so to speak, as many popcorn kernels in the fire as you can, because you never know which one is going to pop. Nice. I, Yeah, I actually have just started um, doing that, because I'm more or less, I've been writing uh, epic slash sword and sorcery fantasy stuff. And I just now had this idea uh, because I read a uh, an anthology of space battles stories mm-hmm. called Space Battles. <laughs> well titled. <laughs> yes, <laughs> apt. <laughs> and uh, I, I read that and uh, I immediately, I was like, okay, this would be cool to write a space battle story uh, that's samurai western in space. Cool. So I'm just now trying to take that next step into, um, you know, trying to write a different genre. So I, I hope it works out. Well, good <laughs> <me>. luck to you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and, well, it seems to have worked out for you. Um, so, uh, well, let's see. You know, I think that was almost all my notes on being genreless. Uh, oh, one, one, one last uh, question about that. If you had to pick a label and, and, and you know like I, I don't like labels very much but if you had to pick a label and say I'm this kind of author well, what would you what would you say can I pick anything or do I have to pick an existing genre oh anything you know how would okay. you describe yourself as an author that's kind of encompassing but yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> um I'll give you I'll give you uh, 10 seconds yeah. to think of an answer I'm trying to think <laughs> um <laughs> Because I, I would I would just like to come up and maybe maybe I should totally do this is come up with a word that means, you know, the guy who just writes new crazy stuff all the time. Um, because even my publishers, uh, Tor Books, when I first sent them Serial Killer, uh, you know, my editor loves it, Moshe Fetter, he's great. Uh, he read the book. He's like, this is fantastic. I can't wait to sell this. And then he sat down to try to come up with a sales plan to pitch it to the rest of the publishing house. And he realized, wait a minute, <laughs> this doesn't fit on any shelf in a bookstore. This is unlike anything else we have. I don't know what to do with this. Mm-hmm. To which Brandon Sanderson said, yep, welcome to Dan Wells writing. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I mean, esoteric. <laughs> Can we use esoteric as a genre label? Sure, sure. Um, ecumenical. Ecumenical. <laughs> That's a good. Ubiquitous. <laughs> Yeah, I I am Maybe. omnipresent. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I am an exploratory author. How's how's that? That sounds good. I, I like exploratory. Explore new genres. Yeah. The next book that I have coming out after the partials mm-hmm. series, and I hope actually to get it out before the third partials book. We'll see. Um, is, that, is, is that Hollow City? It, well, Hollow City coming out in July, but but in terms of the books, I'm still trying to finish up. Mm-hmm is another one that'll be out from Tor called Extreme Makeover Apocalypse Edition, <laughs> which is a uh, an adult science fiction book about cloning. Huh. So and and it's 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 half cloning apocalyptic science fiction and half corporate satire. So again, completely different from all my other stuff. Nice. But just you know only just a couple steps away from you know, like uh, a partials type world. Yeah. You know, again, so that you can kind of make those transitions. Yeah. So, so people who say, "Oh, yeah, of course, Dan's allowed to write this. He already wrote partials, and that dealt with genetic engineering and science fiction. And so, this is just a few degrees off from that." Nice. That's awesome. That sounds fun. A- Extreme Makeover Apocalypse Edition. Extreme Makeover Apocalypse Edition. It is about a uh, health and beauty company who accidentally creates a hand lotion that will overwrite your DNA. Oh, nice. (laughs) 
so it's it's I've got it about 50 60 percent done Stuff and things. Yeah. So, Guillermo, tell me all about your adventures in Washington D.C. Uh, well, still, uh, you know, still looking for that uh, that old Jabberoni. But uh, uh, as long as I keep saying Jabberoni, I'm not going to get a job. No, so, no, uh, they they don't they don't like that on um, resumes. Yeah, you know, everyone loves Flanders. I don't know why. Stupid, sexy Flanders. But, uh, you know, so far it's, uh, we've got some leads. Um, you know, nice. just checking to see if it, if it pans out and, you know, if, uh, just, just, uh, work. And in the meantime, you know, if there's a little, any sort of downtime, uh, write. Yeah, I, I would imagine that you've been, you've probably been writing a bit. How, how has that been going for you this week? Well, I've been outlining, uh, I've been outlining ah. just other stuff. Well, not other stuff, but the, the chapters that I probably should have outlined before, mm -hmm. but, uh, failed to. So, well, I, not that I didn't outline, I just didn't outline very specifically what I wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's the thing yeah. about outlining. We're, we're, you know, we'll have to do a whole episode on that some, it, at some point. Like, you have to have the outline and then, you know, enhance and then, I'm not really sure how many enhancements you have to go through to get to the big idea, but yeah. Well, I always what, what I do, and we'll, we'll actually um, we'll be bringing it up on next week's episode because it's something that Dan Wells, uh, to whom we were speaking today, um, kind of ripped off and made it his own. <laughs> Is the uh, you know the seven point plot system, and that's going to be our topic next week. So I won't give too much away, but yeah, I always start with that. And then I kind of, you know, just kind of let it, let it soak in for a little bit. And then I go back and I do the, you know, just getting a little more in depth with the characters. Like, what does my protagonist want? How is my antagonist going to try to put things in the protagonist's way? You know, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, but it's like, it's different. Way. Well, I don't know. It's, it's probably the same when it comes to comedy, but it's yeah. just like, yeah. like trying to, trying to write something funny is, a little bit more, I don't know. It's like, will this take away from the story? Uh, or, or is the story just the, the, you know, the, the cookie part around that, the chocolate chip, you know, like, it's just. Oh, wait. speaking of that, I, I'm on a oh. diet and it sucks. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it happens, you know, every now and then, uh, a man needs to make sure that his, uh, his boobs do not grow larger <laughs> than his wife's yes. girlfriend's, uh, you name it. Insert female person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, but I've I've noticed that I have quite a bit more energy and I feel, you know, a bit more uh, I don't know creative, I guess. And when I do the whole waking up early in the morning and then working out, I I'm actually a lot more productive during the rest of the day, and I'll I'll get some writing done or, or I'll just do a little further outlining where I'll try to you know write a couple paragraphs about a chapter or a scene. You know, so it really actually does help to well, uh, to be active and then and then do stuff. You know, I've got I've actually found something. It's you know sort of the same effect, but not really exercise. Um, I found that uh, cocaine and methamphetamines actually help oh. out a lot. With that um, I'll have to try that. Yeah, so I'll I have that, yeah. all this energy, but then I you know I, I you know I look back at what I've written down and I'm like, why did I write uh you know a three you know, three chapters on why cupcakes are awesome. I, uh. <laughs> and then I took that time off to, to, um, you know, eat somebody's face off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just not, it's just not the same unless you consume someone's face. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how it should end. Yeah. <laughs> so that way you can look back at it and be like, oh, those were some crazy times. You know? Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing some writing and I, I finally finished that short story that I, I sent you the other, I don't know, I guess last month. Yeah, everything except for the ending. Yeah, I sent it to you with everything except the ending because I just figured I would do that. Uh, so I finally wrote the ending, so I gotta, I gotta send that out to you and, uh, and see how you like it. 
Okay, I'm 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 anxious to see what happens in the end. Mm-hmm. Every, they they all get run over by a truck. Well, that's that's the way it always has to end. Have we talked about that on the show? I'm sure we have. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, about if you're stuck trying to figure out an ending, just suddenly everyone was run over by a truck. But this is my first uh, sci-fi story, so it would have to be everybody was run over by a space truck or by a robot or something. <laughs> everyone was eaten by an alien. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everyone was eaten by Galactus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's always how it goes. I'm uh, was eaten by Galactus. Looking forward to uh, to writing. I don't know because I've been kind of bouncing around some ideas in my head about you know something kind of superhero-y, but uh, oh really? I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to hold off on that for now. But every now and then, when an idea comes up, I'll I'll write it down. And uh, you, you know, it, it's going to eventually turn into something. But for now, I want to focus on what I'm doing and making what I'm doing better. So mm-hmm. yeah, one one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's something I do, too, is I kind of bounce around a bit. Like, I don't I don't just work on one project at a time. Like, I'll, I'll usually have one thing in one phase and another thing in another phase, and I like that. Uh, I Yeah, sort of. That's something I want to kind of keep rolling, but the thing is I always have, I always focus on the main thing I'm working on. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's coming along. It's just I need to... I I need to figure out more jokes now that I'm adding new characters. You know, it's mm. uh, it's it's gonna have to work somehow. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably kind of difficult. The whole uh, trying to get comedy in there. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm trying to yeah, I'm trying to make it comedic because really the story is, you know, what story what storyline hasn't been written already? You know. Yeah, you but, can, all you can do is just add your own touch to something that's already there. Exactly. It's like Star Wars, but instead of in space, they're Mini tries, and they were shot into someone's butt. I, I don't know. It's hey, like, that, that's, just... that's that's like combining two movies. Yeah, Inner Space and Star Wars. Inner Space. Oh, how great was that movie? Uh, although I'm pretty sure no one was injected into an anus at that point. No, they went in through the ear. That movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ear. yeah. But it would have been better through the anus. Yes, it, it would have been. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So that's, that's, you know, speaking of uh, having, you know, written, like I said, I wrote my first uh, sci-fi story. And what we talked about to Dan uh, today, to Dan Wells, was uh, being genreless, like not having, you know, one particular genre in which you write. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have any plans of jumping around and trying different things out? Yeah, because I get bored while writing in one genre. I get very bored, in fact, writing just one genre still. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the last one was, yeah, it was, a fan, you know, epic fantasy. This other one is epic fantasy, you know, sort of. And then well, the next one... Urban, urban fantasy, too. Yeah, and then the one after that's going to be kind of superhero-y. But it's all, well, it's all kind of comedy. I don't think I could write anything, you know, serious to save my life. Yeah. I mean, either way, someone's going to end up laughing, either because I intended it or because I, it's just so bad. But either way, it's a laugh. Laughs laugh. Get a download on uh, Amazon. Maybe uh, I'm. I've just jumped like a light years ahead of where I am right now. Yeah. Well, that's you know I do that too. I I, I keep thinking too far ahead. Like, uh, you know, like when when like, you send when you send a story out to somebody, you have this like knee jerk instinct to think, oh, they're gonna call me tomorrow and say they love the story so much that they wanna. Pay me double for it, and yeah, but yeah, yeah you, you, you gotta not think ahead too much. It's like I wonder who would play my the, my character in a in a movie, yeah. that movie adaptation. <laughs> I know, and I, yeah, I wonder I that too. And I wonder if I'll like it, if I'll be if I'll be really cool with it, or if I'll be just like like Alan Moore and I'll just hate everything. Yeah, I I think uh, just go the Alan Moore route, just hate everything. Then then at least you're consistent. Yeah, and they're like, you didn't get my characters right. Uh, yeah. The storyline is wrong. Uh, the act. Is bad. Um, the special effects. Um, I saw the strings. I saw the pie plates. It's not impressive. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I think overall, it was uh, horrible. But uh, I still got paid, so I'm good. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. You know what? I I, I think that might uh, that might end it for our show tonight. I'm feeling a little tired. Like like I said, I've been, you know, getting up early. And uh, uh, right. 
going to bed mm-hmm. early. But it seems the earlier I go, earlier I go to bed, the harder it is to wake up in the morning because I want to just keep sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, if you don't force yourself to wake up, then you're you just you wake up at like three in the afternoon and you're like then you feel horrible you feel disgusting yeah like you haven't done anything you're disgust you're disgusted with yourself yeah yeah like you're bad and you should feel bad or yeah whatever exactly and then you're like well i need to make it up i need to do so much more before the sun goes down and but you you end up sitting down and watching netflix uh and eating cookie dough off of your off of your belly yeah yeah it happens. I, can't, I can't do that anymore either Oh. That is that is uh that is lamentable. I'm not allowed. It's okay, you know. It, you're doing it. You're doing it for for your children. So your yeah. children will have a future with you. Yet, whereas I am completely alone and unattached, so I can you know die in my 40s, uh, insane, in a cardboard box, muttering to myself. That's you know. Don't feel sorry for me. That's how I want to go. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 your dream. Yeah, someday, someday. <laughs> and I think I think you can attain it. I I think I can. If I if I put my mind to it, I can achieve nothing. Wait. Yeah. At least at least try to finish a complete, you know, r- writing a complete novel before you do that. Yeah, and then and then after I die, it'll become like a big huge thing, and kids will be reading it in school, and they'll be like, "Who was this tortured man?" It's like, well, no, he was just kind of a, he was just kind of a, a recluse that. Uh, hated the world, so I'll be buried right next to Alan Moore. Yes. I, we'll, oh, we'll both yeah. be. Sh- we'll both. We'll both. Our ashes will both be shot out of the same cannon. Yeah. <laughs> like into the Earth's atmosphere because we. Yeah. Just. Yeah, but the, when, bitter, Alan, the bitterness when, runs so deep that we cannot. Even our corpses cannot stay on Earth. Yeah, yeah, but when it happens, like to Alan Moore, it's like it spawns some kind of revolution and you know makes people think. Yeah, and pushed in their lives, you know. So yeah, so or Alan or Moore question, can do that, but we can't. Or question what what the nature of morality is. I'm like, ooh, yeah. Sorry, I I, I can't write anything that deep. I'm like, dude, I'll just stick to fart jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, make people think about through, fart jokes through fart jokes. No, use those fart jokes to just really make people think. It's like, no, you see the. The butthole represented. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to be. Well, yeah, that would be great to write something just so absurdist. Like what was it? Uh, Tom Shepard, who just like people try to like to this day are trying to like analyze like you know his absurdist plays and are are still oh, yeah. you know like when they ask him about it, he's like it doesn't mean anything. Stop looking into it. <laughs> it's like no, yeah. you're lying. Yeah, like, but I like, wrote it. if if you don't look into stuff, it's like what are you gonna what are you gonna do in high school? You know. Nothing. Exactly. You know, you have to have those uh, English teachers and professors that are like, you know, so looking deeper into this, we, you know, it, the, the curtains are blue because the author was sad and wanted to convey. No, no. No, they the were, blue were blue because blue. I, I needed something to match the pillows. I, yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. But I, I don't know. I think it would be cool to be that guy. And when I, when the zombie apocalypse happens, I'll like walk into, Eng- walk into an English classroom and just kind of like be like, wrong. Wrong, it meant nothing. You've wasted your life. Sorry. <laughs> Why does it have to be in a zombie apocalypse? I don't know, because how else am I going to come back from the dead? <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Un- oh, unless, technology. Uh, unless you're some sort of necromancer and you've not told me. I don't think I am. I think I would know. I'm pretty sure you brought a chicken back to life once. Yeah? Oh, what? either that or I'm thinking of, either that or I'm thinking of Thanksgiving. In which case, you just made it delicious. Oh, okay, yeah. And it wasn't a chicken, it was probably a turkey. Oh, hopefully a turkey. Although I did have that happen to me once. We went to my aunt's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and there was chicken instead of turkey. And I was like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> but It's like, I will murder you. Yeah. <laughs> with this, I will murder you with this chicken. I, I don't care that you're related to me. You are going to die. And there was no <laughs> stuffing either, so, man, whatever. Well, I you can turn the chicken into stuffing through a, a process that we call shove it up your. Oh, never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on that note, before we uh, before we degrade any more, 
Uh, hey, don't li- forget to uh, listen to the other podcasts that are out there. Uh, Dan Wells is on Writing Excuses that you can hear every week, and that's that's really the the sh- main show I think that inspired me to to start this show. And then, uh, of course, there is the Dead Robot Society and uh, the Roundtable Podcast, who well, I consider to- our sister. But listen to us first, and then download this on several different accounts so that oh, yeah, we can artificially inflate our numbers and yeah. uh, throw it in other people's faces and be like, yeah, that's right. We got four <laughs> people to download us this yeah. week. All right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm proud that we actually got to, um, we've been at this since April and we are probably, I think we had about 2,500 downloads since then. And that, that makes me happy. I don't, I don't care. Even if it were like 10, I would be happy, but like that it's like 2,500. I'm, I'm very happy. So thanks to everybody yep. out there that's listening and, uh, feel free to go on iTunes and give us some stars and some ratings and follow us on Twitter at FMW podcast and feel, feel free to send us money and, yeah. um, Naked pictures. I, I would I would accept that as currency. Um, although my student loans may not, but you know it's a thought that counts. But at least you'll have some naked pictures, so that's really what counts. All right. Yeah. That, let's let's get. Come on, ladies. Let's get this done. And 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 dudes. I guess if you if you feel like sending something in, it's not like I'm gonna just toss them away. And no, I I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. So um, let's end the show on that note. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week where we'll have uh, more uh, of our continuing conversation with Dan Wells. And Guillermo, it's good to be recording with you again. It's, it's, uh, I missed you. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I missed, next week. I missed the process. I missed you. I miss, uh, I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to thank my mom and, uh, Jesus. You're and, getting, uh, you're getting the, the walk off music. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And it sounds a lot like Jurassic Park for some reason. So, anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next week. I am Benjamin J. Love. And I am Guillermo. Why do they play the Jurassic Park music uh, instead of just having uh, just a big Tyrannosaurus uh, roar? Walk people off. (laughs) Oh, now we're getting interference. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Right. You you can yell right, too, if you want. Oh no, I, I, I like the way you say it. It's like when I say it, I'm like, like my voice cracks. I just sound like I'm some kind of condescent, like, 13 year old. It just doesn't sound